the shoveling will begin now, right? Yeah, so give yourself a lot of time. Maybe do it in chunks today uh, because there's a lot of snow out there. It is heavy too, mixed to, it's, it feels really wet. So very heavy. If you are going to be out shoveling, take a break, do some stretching as well. Don't forget, don't forget. And I want to do a shout out for all the snow plow drivers who've been working all night long to clear our roads. Thank you, thank you. We love you, <laughs> right? Yes, because uh, man, there was a lot of snow last night and police are still staying. You don't have to be on the roads.
3750 to make your reservations for the fur ball or visit the events count julie would want a horn so she could notify people to get the hell out of the way mm -hmm. uh, april says she would want headlights or autopilot sure yeah, yeah. obviously how about brake lights would be pretty handy if someone in front of you had them you know those people you're at costco or something and they just stop all of a sudden you almost hit them yeah. it'd be nice to have that advance warning you see the red light come on you're like oh we're about to stop that's Let's right go. or even a turning signal like let me know you're gonna yeah, turn it yeah, that's yeah. important information and wilmer would want one of those uh Catalytic converters? Catalytic converter. Catalytic yeah. converter. So his sorry ass would be worth something. <laughs> okay. I know what I wouldn't mind actually is like an odometer in my like wrist or something like that so I could like track my steps. You oh, know? well. Lifetime steps? Yeah. I mean, you have that in your phone. Yeah. Already. You can look at, if you don't have your phone on you, you know, it's, it's just not tracking it. Okay. It'd just be kind of fun, you know, to see like yeah, a yeah. lifetime achievement, you know, at the end of my life, I've walked 1,275,000 steps. Yeah, yeah, an ongoing one yeah, that yeah. was always there. Then if you want to date someone younger, you just roll it back. Find somebody to do that. Jackie would want a spare tire. Yeah? Know, that work. Maybe, maybe that's just an excuse like for... Like break your leg, just kind of take it off. <laughs> put another... Yeah, I would want one on, like, just a skinny little one, though. <laughs> <laughs> all fixed up and yeah. ready to go put it back on john has an idea yeah. he's like how about a muffler so you can fart anytime you want but it's all taken care of you don't have to worry one. about anything yeah. and no one can eat it maybe you can uh it's muffled or if you want you can be the guy who has the amplified system yeah, yeah, yeah. which just makes it sound like a little after <laughs> so you can hear you coming a mile away it's, oh my god <laughs> it's john john Tucker and Mora on 102.1 The Edge and The Weekend Show. Maybe I'm foolish, maybe... On candidates finding you, it finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's what you believe. I want to after all. 6797-7995. Or email pradeep.menon at mortgagegroup.com. FSRA 10315. What do you want to do in your life? I'm going to ask you to ask you to ask to save up to $35 per pet. Some conditions apply. It's a perfect match made to last. The next Lotto 649 Gold Ball Jackpot is big. Like, really big. It's a huge $40 million. And... Dollars, are we talking a public co committee where we're going to be bringing information into the public domain and people are going to get answers? I don't think people are going to be satisfied with that. You're going to want to look at the actual information and the intelligence, and you're going to look at the emails and the sticky notes and the meeting appointments and stuff like that, and that has to be in an in-camera venue, and you're going to have to have people who are obviously cleared to do that, and then there has to be...
to be trust for Canadians to say, okay, that's the right decision. To air it like perhaps the convoy, and we're going to have everyone from Premier Xi coming in and, and testifying, it's not going to happen, not to be facetious. From my perspective, I think two things need to happen. We need to look at retrospectively what occurred in 2019 and 2021. And there are institutions that were recently created in order to do that kind of review. Like uh, this is the NSI COP? The, right, the, the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, where you have both... Uh, it just members rolls of, off the tongue. Uh, it does. <laughs> I have never mentioned that, that organization before. Um, <laughs> you know, that... that rev Join the burn. A 24-hour commemorative gathering at Nathan Phillips Square on March 11th. Visit toronto.ca slash the burn. Welcome to the New Haven Funeral Center, Canada's largest boutique-style funeral
a teacher, and I've got a kid in grade nine. Ask your teacher to register your class for soaring. There'll be two days of action-packed, entertaining information about university, college, and vocational trade schools. It's free, and it's online or in person. Teachers can register online now. Inspire.ca. That's I-N-D-S-P-I-R-E dot C-A. Are you an early childhood educator looking for a more rewarding tool?
to make each episode because that's how particular they're being with the shooting. Overkill. But no, it's not. No, but. it's not. Listen, I know that you don't watch it. Actually, you do. You just watch it over Natalie's shoulder. However, if you watched it act properly, you you understand. I'd be it is. properly depressed like everybody else who watches. Yeah, I want to be depressed. I want. I will. I will be depressed for some day. I will. Well, so the backlash is interesting because people are saying, "Well, does it, is anybody worth that kind of money?" Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to say. You got a show that that pulls in 20, 25 million viewers mm -hmm. a night. Yep. <laughs> You're yes. worth more than a million bucks. Yeah. That's a discount. Here's what you should be mad at. Mm -hmm. What do you think the guy who signs her checks makes? Like, that's what do you thing. think? What do you think the heads of HBO were making? Yeah. And and listen, it's a very successful service. Mm -hmm. But we're talking hundreds of millions per year in executive bonuses. That's right. So let's not hate on Zendaya, yeah. Yeah. who has earned this, been working since she was a kid, yeah. coming up through Disney, getting yeah. underpaid. I, like man, a million bucks an episode, it should be more. Absolutely. And this is not this is not an easy role to play. She is also a woman, and she is a woman of color. Yeah. Pay her. Yeah. Like yeah. Pay the white. Old men on top of her, and, honestly. And I feel like Seriously. this. I feel like this.
pacientes de este virus, eh, algunos de los cuales pueden progresar a lesiones de alto riesgo que pueden derivar en cáncer y definitivamente es algo que no queremos. En la mayoría de los casos, las personas afectadas con este virus no presentan síntomas o signos de infección, sino eh, siendo pertinente efectuar un chequeo médico regular. Eso es lo que recomiendan. Mr. la richesse de la chanson d'expression française et internationale à un public francophone et francophile amateur de beaux spectacles. Pour information, les répétitions ont lieu chaque mercredi de la mi-septembre à la fin mai de 18h30 à 21h à l'auditorium. 
programme des écoles secondaires catholiques Saint-Frère-André et public Toronto-Ouest au 330 avenue Lansdowne ainsi qu'un samedi après-midi par mois de 13h à 17h, toujours au même endroit. Alors toutes celles et ceux qui voudraient se joindre au groupe dynamique sont invités à se présenter dès 18h30 à l'une des répétitions jusqu'à la fin octobre. Et si vous souhaitez également avoir de plus amples informations concernant l'ensemble... There will 
will be an increase in it, although many times when I've gone to use it, it's been too busy. <clears throat> and that's really a challenge too. In, in my course, we look at ChatGPT and think about how it could be used and what it could be used for and what makes it work. What does it do in terms of data collection? What biases might be found in there? Um, you know, what are the security risks? So we really look at it critically. I've heard of other educators who are using ChatGPT to write lesson plans and then have their students go through the lesson plan and think critically about what it proposed. It's not a perfect model. It's it's not a person, and it, it makes mistakes. It's got information from a closed data set. So on the one hand, you've got a closed data set that may not give you as much misinformation about particular groups. But on the other hand, you have to worry about how is the information being controlled. So that's a long answer to is, <laughs> is it being used uh, from what I'm reading on, on Twitter from my colleagues and other educators. A lot of people are interested in integrating it into teaching because our students will need to know about it mm -hmm. and uh, it's better for them to learn about it. Well, it's interesting that you say that because, I mean, on the student side, I'm sure there are a lot of people using it as well. And, you know, when I was going through university, it was like, do not plagiarize. And while technically ChatGPT isn't exactly plagiarism, it is essentially doing the work for the students. So how do you think this affects the quality of learning? Oh, I, I think it's concerning because I think it can be plagiarizing. If ChatGPT is returning information from the data set that may have been gathered on the internet that was written by that have banned the use of ChatGPT. I'm not sure how that could be monitored. I've heard of people that have written programs. There was a new T student, I believe, wrote a program to detect plagiarism, and they, they're not perfect, those systems. I think, you know, there's always been a risk of plagiarism, and I think it's more important for us to educate our students on AI literacy. Uh, those AI literacies are really important for our students to understand where is this information coming from. Is it correct? Because ChatGPT has been known to return information that's incorrect. And then cite it properly. It's a tool. We should be teaching our students how to use that tool and how to understand it. I like that. I like that a lot. And, you know, the workload, it does tend to pile up for a lot of students. And sometimes... Sometimes you're just looking for that shortcut, and that is also what ChatGPT can offer for a lot of students. So how, you kind of mentioned this already, but how would you encourage students to do their work organically? I think ChatGPT offers us the opportunity to think critically about the information that it's providing to us. So go ahead and ask GPT to answer a question like, you know, what is artificial intelligence? And then look at that answer and think about how does does that make sense? Is it cited? Is it cited correctly? Because sometimes chat GPT will return citations that, that don't actually exist. For most people that are teaching, they've already provided resources. So I've already provided in my course, for example, resources that explain what artificial intelligence is. And so I've provided those. So why not take the definitions that I've provided in the course and then compare them to what chat GPT is providing and think about that critically too. I think the learning would be deepened by that process. That's interesting. So I think that there is good to this that can come out of it if it's done properly is basically what you're saying. Yes, I think we just have to learn to use the tool properly because I don't think banning it or telling our students not to use it is it, going to work. Okay, and obviously this is going to develop so much more and the way AI and artificial intelligence works in the next couple of years is going to look very different than it does now. So what do you think that the future of education looks like with AI developing more and more? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> what I think about often, a lot of us have been chatting about this as well. Do we consider it to be a disruptive technology? I think it could be. I think it's disruptive because it forces us as educators to think about how to integrate the technology into our teaching and into our students' learning. And that's the disruptive part, that it provides us with new ways of doing things. But that's the thing. The technology is changing all the time. We have to learn about it. The most difficult thing is not every educator has a technical background. In terms of AI literacy, we need AI literacy to help us understand what these tools mean. They mean to our students.
Holmes and Vaughn and Major McKenzie and Highway 400 and Highway 7 and Wagstaff. Download the free TO Waste app to access your waste collection schedule and drop off. Pearson Airport today. You'll want to check ahead to make sure it's still ready for liftoff. Dozens of flights in and out of Pearson were canceled or delayed last night. The Ontario Liberals are set to vote today on which way they want to choose their next leader. Stephen Del Duca resigned last year after the provincial election, went on to become mayor of Vaughan. Nobody's officially thrown their hat into the ring just yet, but a few party members on the federal and provincial levels are openly exploring bids. The UN is expecting the number of refugees to rise this year. Almost half of the number of people in Syria were already displaced by civil war when last month's earthquake struck. They say the quake has created a crucial need for housing. The number of displaced people around the world is expected to be double this year, what it was eight years ago. Just while I left you, I was a few party leaders on the federal federal and to help civilians flee the beleaguered eastern town. <laughs>
that's what I feel is my responsibility. But from your perspective, what do you think is the place to start? The place to start is the awareness. And I don't know for there. Like, I think people understand being diabetic or being obese has risk, but I don't know if they know to what extent. The shoveling will begin now, right? Yeah, so give yourself a lot of time. Maybe do it in chunks today uh, because there's a lot of snow out there. It is heavy too, mixed to, it's, it feels really wet. So very heavy. If you are going to be out shoveling, take a break. Do some stretching as well. Don't forget, don't forget. And I want to do a shout out for all the snow plow drivers who've been working all night long to clear our roads. Thank you, thank you. We love you, <laughs> right? Yes, because uh, man, there was a lot of snow last night and police are still staying. If you don't have to be on the roads, 